<laughs> for the students that are, they didn't come, so I have to revenge on uh, people that came. Okay, so this is not the fourth, but the last. Not That's that. the important adjective. So, uh, and uh, I don't know. It will be, the title has kind of changed because I made some uh, adjustment. So it will be again about sick and defective. Manifolds and also something about hopefully manifolds if you won't all uh, go to sleep. Manifolds covered by lines. So let me just uh, remind you the notation because uh, so the base field is C and uh, we work with uh, smooth embedded projective manifolds, irreducible and non-degenerate. And my favorite notations are N for the dimension and C for the co-dimension. So this is a setting. And uh, maybe I recall that X is called quadratic if it is scheme theoretically an intersection of quadrics. And I wanted to sketch a proof of a theorem by uh, Francesco Russo and myself, which is with this notation, if x is quadratic, then the Hartshorn conjecture holds. Meaning, if n is at least two times dimension plus one, and x is quadratic, of course, then x is a complete intersection. This is a high man. What about your fellows? Yeah. They will come too? Yeah, please. Okay. We started a bit uh, earlier at, uh, at the general's order. Okay. And I, I would like to sketch a proof of this, right? And uh, it depends uh, on, uh, so there are some, uh, some steps. The first thing will be to show that X is covered by lines. And then to use these lines, precisely we shall show that the variety of lines passing through the general point in its natural ambient projective space, which is a space of directions at uh, the tangent directions at this point. Uh, this is a complete intersection. And then from this to deduce a conclusion, namely that X itself is a complete intersection. For explaining the first point, let me sketch quickly a general criterion. So assume that X is scheme theoretically defined by equations of degrees, say I like to order them decreasingly, Let's say there are M such equations. And uh, there is the following observation. So uh, let us take the first C of the equations and denote by D0 this uh, apparently strange number. 
So you take the first C of these degrees as if you would uh, consider it to be a, cons a complete intersection, although it is not, right? And you subtract one and then you make the sum. And this is a number. And the remark is that whenever, so first maybe, so uh, if to come back to our uh, quadratic case, if x is quadratic, quadratic, so if you want, if it, uh, this happens if and only if this d0 is just a codimension, right? Because all these guys are 2. Right? So this is a number which is in general, in general this number is of course bigger or equal and the variety is quadratic exactly if it is equal. Okay? So this will be helpful. And now the main uh, remark for the first point is that whenever, so if, if uh, this g0 is not exceeding n minus 1, then x is covered by lines. Moreover, a, the dimension, so the number we denote it by a, which was the dimension of the variety of lines passing through the general point. So this, these are the standard uh, notation, sorry guys, who came for the first time. So this is uh, lines contained in X and containing X general point. Okay? And uh, my favorite notation is to denote this number a, and the claim and this, this number is at least n minus one minus d zero. Okay. So this is uh, the remarks I propose, and this this is quite easy. You have to notice two facts. So the first remark is that. Quite generally, uh, so conditions imposed uh, by a line through x to be contained in x are so if you think you you just develop these equations in Taylor series on the tangent space at x, right? And then uh, the condition for the line to be contained there is the vanishing of these coefficients, right? So how many will they be? So there will be for... So, uh, you take the second degree term, third degree term, etc. Modulo the first degree term, which defines the tangent space. Right? Okay? So, you will be a sum of di minus 1 uh, conditions. Right? This, is, this is kind of uh, obvious, right? But uh, this is uh, not intelligent enough. Actually, we shall, there is an observation that uh, you can use only the first C of these guys. And this comes from a remark by, uh, actually by Severi. Severi and uh, modernized by Bertram Ein. Lazar's fell in a quite famous uh, paper in uh, JAMS, I think uh, 91. They observed that you can link if you can, if you, instead of taking all the equations, you take only the first C, C, right? Then you get a complete intersection containing X and maybe something more, right? So, uh, zeros of the first F1, uh, maybe, 
I should write them, yes, F1, Fc, mm -hmm. where, of course, Fi, Fi's are equations defining x scheme theoretically, then this may be written this way. Hmm? This is a complete intersection, and this is kind of linkage, right? So, x and x prime are linked by this complete intersection. And the point is that this is connected, so this is non-empty. Actually, say, they meet, this is uh, an effective divisor on X whose class can be computed. Okay? And now you make the following uh, uh, trivial remark. So this is X, this is X prime, right? So you, now you apply this, this remark. But if you have a general point here, a line that is contained in X or in X union X prime, which is this complete intersection, right? Is the same thing, right? Because X was a general point on X. So, in fact, with this observation, a, if you take only the first C terms of these guys, you get exactly this number, and that's actually exactly why it, it, it was introduced. So this, this number of conditions, conditions, ensuring that the line is completely contained in X. So the rest is obvious because if uh, you are in Pn minus 1, the project device tangent space, so in, if you are in Pn minus 1, and you want the line to stay in X, so you take a tangent direction, you want it to be completely contained in X, so here you have dimension n minus 1, you have these zero conditions, and so uh, if the number of conditions is more or equal, then you'll have a solution, right? And vice versa, this, <laughs> of course, the dimension will be, in general, the dimension in projective space is bigger equal than the dimension of the ambient projective space minus the number of equations, right? Okay, because uh, here you have uh, done this uh, thing, uh, these conditions are only, it's important, set theoretical. Set theoretical equations for lines, for LX in Pn minus 1. Not scheme theoretical. Okay, so that's. Uh, so uh, now I think I proved the first point. Why? Well, because this remark tells you that d0 is c because x was quadratic. So the condition reads uh, the condition reads n bigger equal c plus one, right? But actually, uh, I have more. Right? I have bigger equal two c plus one. Right? So it's a fourth theory. Okay, so this is the uh, first point. Now uh, I have to use uh, some more properties, and uh, where do I have to read? Maybe here. So now, second point is very important and very nice. So. Let us start from this inequality. So we have seen that I have a always n minus 1 minus d0, which is in our case n minus 1 minus c. But this is at least n minus 1 half. This is another way of expressing this condition if your arithmetic is good enough, right? Aha, so I know that the variety of lines has dimension at least half the dimension of the ambient projective space. This allows me to apply some important theorem that was mentioned in the previous lectures. So this implies, and the non-trivial fact here is Huang's theorem, this implies that Lx in Pn minus 1 is smooth, this is uh, pretty clear, irreducible, 
this is easy, a consequences of smoothness because here dimension is at least half the dimension of the projective space, would it be uh, at least, would there be at least two irreducible components they meet and this would produce singularities, so contradicting smoothness. And the highly non-trivial fact, which is Huang's theorem, this is non-degenerate. And this is crucial for uh, what uh, follows, okay? So this is, uh, uh, this is it. Moreover, now, now uh, we have to, to do something uh, more serious. So, uh, still at this step, which is the most difficult, uh, let us recall the following uh, thing. It was uh, our lemma 3, in which uh, we examined something about the second projective fundamental form. Um, so let me recall the context. So in general, we have always this inclusion, where this is a variety of lines at the general point, and this is the base locus of the second funda projective fundamental form, right? Now fact, which is not difficult and can be verified, when x is quadratic, this inclusion is in equality. Which essentially comes out from the fact that when you develop in Taylor's series the functions, the equations on the tangent space, there is only the linear and the quadratic part because they are of degree two. Okay, so uh, this is responsible for the good behavior here and uh, actually uh, this is Kim theoretically. Okay, but now remember that we had our delta, so the dimension of the second variety in general was 2n plus 1, a. 2n plus 1 minus delta some uh, defect. And this delta was at least n minus 1 plus c, right? This comes from the fact that the second variety is in Pn. And so this dimension is smaller or equal than n. And if you make this explicit, you get this inequality. Good. So in our case, since n is great with respect to c, this is certainly positive. Okay? And the content of lemma 3 was ooh, I have to move. The content of lemma 3 was that when delta is positive, then the dimension of the second projective fundamental form was exactly c minus 1. So this is, let me remind you, a linear system of quadrics on the projective ice tangent space. And the fact is a non-complete linear system. And the fact is that it is actually uh, exactly, so in general it is smaller or equal than this. And here it is exactly equal to c minus 1. This was a non-trivial fact that was uh, used in the previous lecture too and was not proved. It depends on some, on some facts, uh, fulton lazarus felt connectivity theorem and things like this, and I won't explain Terracini lemma, essentially. Good. So, in our case, so, conclusion, Alex, which is the base locus of the second fundamental form, is scheme theoretically defined by C independent quadrics inside Pn minus 1. 
the space of tangent direction. Uh, here it is c minus one because this is a um, uh, linear system. Here it's uh, equations in the vector space, so it's one more. Okay. And now time has come to come uh, with uh, the most uh, important piece of artillery of this proof which is the following completely remarkable theorem by a completely remarkable guy of name Faltings which is not uh, Paltings, is Faltings uh, telling the following, it's uh, by far the best result still known about the Hartson conjecture in general his result is assume x in some PR is smooth, irreducible, non degenerate, and scheme theoretically defined by a number of equations which does not exceed half of the dimension of the ambient projective space. Then, Y is a complete intersection defined by that number of equations. A fantastic result uh, which is uh, published in Inventiones in uh, 81, if I'm not wrong, so it's an old result. Okay? And I will apply, and this will end the proof of step two, so apply Faltings result to Lx in P n minus 1. So to the, this small object which is the variety of lines uh, seen inside the space of tangent directions. Let me kindly point out that in order to apply Faltings result you need everything that was uh, told till now, that is to say you, you have to know that it is smooth, irreducible and non-degenerate. In fact it is. Here you have to know that it is scheme theoretically defined by how many equations? By lemma 3, it is defined by C equations. So, defined by C equations. Quadratic equations, remember, right? But now, look, this is one of the miracles of the world. What is the condition in Faltings? It has to be that the number of equations is at most half of the dimension of the ambient space. The ambient space is n minus 1, so I need this. But this is just another way of saying that n is at least 2 times codimension plus 1. So I think at least this kind of uh, reasoning points out that uh, Hartson bound to C plus 1 in some cases is not uh, given arbitrarily eh? because you see it's uh, exactly the number that uh, you should uh, have, right? Okay, clear? So moral so now we know that this is a complete intersection so the small thing there it is a complete intersection but it's not yet finished it is what kind of a complete intersection well, let's do the computation till the end of dimension so it is a complete intersection of C quadrics so what is the dimension? The dimension is n minus 1 minus c, right? So this is our number a, right? Okay? Because the quadrics were independent, so these are exactly all the equations. Okay. Now, how to conclude? 
The conclusion comes from another, from a theorem that is uh, one of the main results in this uh, Bertram Ein Lazarsfeld paper, in which they observe that. So now maybe I write here use Bertram Ein Lazarsfeld paper, in which they prove that if the canonical class is Ox of, and here you uh, put d0 uh, plus 1 minus n, d0 plus 1 minus n, then x is a complete intersection. x is a complete intersection. And the proof, look here, but I don't want to give the proof of the result uh, in this paper, but just they compute the class of the divisor. So if you remember, the trick here was to make this linkage, which is actually due to Severi, who used it systematically for surfaces. So you take the first C equations, and you get x plus something, right? These two things intersect along a divisor. The fact that the canonical divisor is exactly given by this formula tells precisely that the class of this divisor is zero. So this being uh, an effective divisor of class zero, it is zero. So this tells you that x prime is empty because this is connected as I explained. So x prime empty means x is a complete intersection, so the first C equations are enough. So uh, uh, now how to reach this thing? This is easy, because now we know that x was a prime funnel, right? Remember, it is covered by lines and the Picard group is cyclic because already when n is at least c plus 2 by uh, Bart Larsen, as we saw, the Picard group is cyclic generated by the hyperplane section. On the other hand, we know that the index of this Fano variety is always a plus 2. I made this computation where a is our, our number there. Okay, so this is, so this is n plus 1 minus c, right, n plus 1 minus c, and uh, okay, here, uh, okay, perfect, uh, maybe uh, this is minus here, sorry. So this is n plus 1 minus c, very well, so this practically tells you that the canonical, minus canonical class is i times h, so canonical class is as it should be, it's, a, uh, it's a c minus n minus 1, h, but c is d0, so this is d0 minus n minus 1, h, and this is exactly what you need in uh, here. Okay. So you get the canonical class is exactly the one you expect, and you apply the theorem by Bertram Heine. Plus, as well, to deduce that uh, it is a complete intersection. So the proof, uh, on one hand, shows the usefulness of these techniques in which we use systematically the variety of lines through the general point of x to yield some global and non-trivial conclusions about x. On the other hand, there is a number of numerical miracles in which this basic inequality uh, that is our hypothesis was used in at least three ways in this reasoning, which uh, makes it clear that the argument cannot be extended to more general situation. I mean, it's crucial uh, for 
the, this proof to work that uh, it is quadratic and uh, we used quite a number of, uh, of facts and uh, I think that now I've put together matters so that you have an idea about uh, how this works. Questions? If not, I will change the subject. That this was the last thing I owe you, mm -hmm. in principle, because this was from uh, I promised you that, but I needed to lay my three and uh, uh, various things. So uh, now, okay, good. Now let us come back to second defective manifold and recall some facts. Uh, first, I'd like to recall some absolutely basic results by Fyodor Zak, our common friend, and uh, to see somehow how uh, it uh, inspired us for uh, giving s this concept of uh, local quadratic entry locus manifolds, and uh, to see some uh, new classification results that go beyond his famous uh, classification of severic varieties. So I will uh, now, so maybe just let me recall that the dimension of the second variety is 2n plus 1 minus delta and when delta is positive these are second defective. Okay, now we have the following absolutely remarkable theorem by Zach which has two points. I have a, uh, <laughs> I have a way of mine of presenting this, so uh, I will try to... So first assume that uh, the notations are as usual, assume the second variety is not filling P and then uh, Zach tells that uh, the effect is at most half the dimension of the variety. Moreover, Equality cases are classified by him, and these are the famous four severi varieties, which are of dimension 2, 4, 8, or 16. Secondly, when a variety is defective, then n cannot exceed half this curious looking number. Moreover, equality cases are classified, but here life is easier. There is only one such. X should be projectively uh, the second Veronese variety in its natural embedding. Right? And these two nice theorems may be uh, presented, so uh, presentation, uh, I won't give the proof, of course. Uh, my presentation is uh, uh, like a uh, jump and dive theorem. So I have to explain the jump and dive theorem. And things are this way. Here you have n. And here you have the Olympic swimming pool. And here you have water. And here it's uh, 2n plus 1 the level of the water. Now, you want to jump from the Olympic trampoline and maybe you want to dive. Not to die, to <laughs> dive. And now, uh, Master Zach shows us that, first of all, there is the depth so here you have the bottom of 
the pool. And so your maximal possible dive will be half n. So you will get here only 3n half plus 1. So uh, you, you cannot dive more than that. Okay. So whenever you are above the surface of the water, you can jump. But you cannot dive more than the you know, depths of the pool, right? You hurt the bottom. Moreover, there is a... So this is a, if you want, this is the maximum depth. And there is also a maximum height. You can jump from without splashing on the water, dying and not diving. So, here you have that number. Right? If you dive from uh, a higher altitude, then you won't dive. You will die. You get here and you transform into molecules. Okay? That's exactly what is written here. If you want to dive, you can dive only from this. And you can go only up to here. So if you dive from here, and you are dead. Okay? This is uh, his theorem. And now, if you remember, I, we have uh, introduced the LQL varieties that were uh, defined by this property for any x, x prime in x general points. There exists a quadric containing them and of maximum possible dimension, that is the defect. And uh, we saw that uh, LQL implies conning connected because, of course, if you have a quadric of positive dimension, you also have a conic through these points and conic connected are defective. These were so. Now, together with uh, why, why, where do they come from? They appear, these varieties, they appear kind of implicitly in Zach's work because all extremal examples in his theorem, namely Severi varieties and the second Veronese, which is actually, when it is a surface, one of the Severi varieties, uh, are LQL varieties. They are even QL varieties, meaning that not only there is such a quadric, but the whole entry locus is a quadric of dimension delta, if you remember. Okay. And now uh, we managed to classify this. So there is a theorem by us, which is a kind of classification of conic connected varieties manifolds. So in particular of LQLs. And this is as follows. So essentially there are these uh, five cases. The first one is a, let's say, a product of two projective spaces, embedded segre, say with A, B at least two. Then you have a hyperplane section of this. Then you have a blowing up with 
center a linear space of projective space embedded by quadrix through the linear space L. Now L is of dimension between 0 and uh, n minus 2 as it should be. Here you have the second Veronese and here you have the general case which is for the time being a mystery although we know something. Here the Picard group is that so these are prime funnels And we know that the index has to be at least half n plus 1. And x is LQL exactly if the index is n plus delta half. So you see quadratic antilocus are characterized among conic connected by giving the precise value of the index. While here we only know that necessarily the index is at least n plus one half. Okay? <coughs> Good. Now, uh, here comes, uh, as uh, you remember probably, I promised you to give some expectations we have, which uh, if true would be rather nice results, and which are of course supported by some partial results that we already know. And here, uh, I'd like to state a few. So, uh, in order to do so, let me recall some two more results that were obtained. So, theorem. The first part has already been uh, mentioned. It is due to Huang and Quebecus. published in Crelay in 2005 or 6, I don't remember exactly, telling that X prime funnel index strictly bigger than two thirds of N, then X is conical. So we wanted to see if this necessary condition is uh, really optimal. And the only result we knew about uh, at the moment we produced the first version of the paper was this result by Huang and Quebecus. But this, as you can see, is stronger. And we were very happy that uh, before we published our paper, some referees uh, helped us uh, delay the publication. Um, some other nice result appeared that is due to other two people, namely Bonavero and Andreas Hering. who showed that if X is a complete intersection funnel and of index at least n plus one half, you see, exactly what we needed, then X is conic connected. So actually, this shows that our classification kind of is best possible and if you want to struggle with the generic case, that is to say, if we want to understand this last and as usual most difficult case, 
we kind of uh, have to fight with Hartson conjecture because we'll have to distinguish complete intersections among other funnels. So, and uh, we, we are uh, very very happy that this result is true. The proof is uh, elementary but uh, tricky and uh, you know uh, intelligent proof. Good. Uh, let me also maybe point out that um, okay maybe let me give the expectation so now we have uh, an expectation to close up these things well we are trying to understand which prime funnel manifolds are complete intersection and uh, our expectation is as follows so uh, x is conic connected if and only if uh, maybe excuse me let us specify that x is a prime funnel manifold because otherwise we know oh, that x is conic connected if and only if two things happen first they are defective and second g index is at least n plus one half so let me remind you that we already showed that the two conditions are necessary because you know if there is a conic passing through, the, through two general points it will stay inside the entry locus so the entry locus will be positive dimensional so delta is positive right okay this is trivial moreover when x is conic connected necessarily the and the prime funnel the index is at least half uh, n plus one as shown in our theorem so the the expectation is actually the other impl implication okay so uh, we we first uh, thought that uh, maybe this would be enough but this is not the case there are examples where uh, this condition is satisfied actually if you don't say that the uh, defect is positive a uh, Juan Quebecus result cannot be improved okay and uh, I would like to give an exercise to people following closer this uh, the Juan Quebecus I mentioned previously in the other in the other talks was like this so if x covered by lines and uh, the second variety of the variety of lines fills up the whole ambient small projective space then x is conic connected and I even gave last time a simple proof of that remember well actually we are talking about the same paper and the same theorem essentially because the exercise I would like to propose tells you the following show that if the index well x prime funnel as usual prime funnel of index bigger than two thirds its dimension then this that x is covered by lines we already saw this and this condition holds so by this part of their work which was explained in full detail last uh, a 
uh, Friday, it will imply this. Right? So let me repeat. So you have a prime funnel whose index is big enough, precisely such big. Then show that it is covered by lights. This I already explained, I think. And moreover, this condition holds. Then apply this to show that it is conic connected, so you have a proof of this assertion. Okay? Now hint, I give a hint, use uh, Zach's Zach theorem part one. Okay? Okay? So it will be by contradiction, right? That so assume that they are not, and then uh, the defect would be at most this, and you compute and you find the contradiction. Remember, just uh, remember that the index and the dimension of LX, so index is just A plus 2, and A was the dimension of the variety of lines. So, of course, you have to use these things. So you will get exact. Of course you don't apply it for X, you apply it for uh, LX. So uh, use axiom 1 for LX in PN minus 1. Okay? Good. So this was uh, what I wanted to say about this. And I give you another exercise. So this is the first exercise. Oops, I think I should uh, erase some things. Uh, cannot continue like this. The second exercise is that, so prove that the bonavero herring theorem follows from this expectation. Uh, by the way, what number? This was expectation number six, I think. Am I wrong? Can you? Uh, I promised the number of expectations and I lost counting at a certain in my numerotation it is 6, but I think it should be correct. Okay. So, in a way, uh, their theorem on one hand supports uh, this classification result of ours. On the other, it, would, it supports also the conjecture, the expectation, because it would be a consequence of it. Right? So, uh, how would this follow that? Well, simply show, so the exercise here is show that if X is a final complete intersection, right, with this property, then delta is positive. Right? And that's exactly what you should prove. And that's just a junction formula. It's very easy. Okay. Uh, now, I will uh, close up this part with the last, probably most difficult expectation of all. So maybe, excuse me, uh, another fact is, so fact, the expectation number six would uh, give also the following characterization of so X prime funnel, then X is LQL if and only if delta is positive and the index is at least n plus delta half. It is easy to show that the other inequality index at most n plus delta half always holds. So if you combine 
uh, them you see that this follows from the previous term. So this would be uh, a nice characterization of conic connected manifolds by, by two ne necessary and sufficient conditions which are numerical and very, very okay in our opinion. And uh, given the previous result, this would practically close the subject somehow. And in particular, local quadratic entry locus, which were uh, just a special, very special case of these, would also be characterized in a nice way by actually here equality holds a posteriori. Good. And now I will uh, close up this part about uh, dual about uh, second defective manifolds by stating a, another expectation which in our opinion is uh, probably the most difficult but also the most sexy of all and this is uh, practically a complete classification of local quadratic entry locus manifolds, so expectation number seven is as follows any local quadratic entry locus manifold is got by one of the following two operations isomorphic projection and or linear section from a rational homogeneous oh excuse me any prime funnel because we know the others from a rational homogeneous manifold in its standard embedding so this, if true, will show that indeed these are God-given, so to say. Because, you know, rational homogeneous manifolds are obtained from complex simple league groups, algebraic league groups, right? Uh, as homogeneous spaces modulo some parabolic subgroup. And there is a natural embedding because the Picard group is generated by the hyperplane section, right? And what we state is that any LQL should be essentially deducible from one of these. How? Either by isomorphic projections or by cutting. When you cut, you may lose homogeneity. So that's why, uh, you know, these are the maximal ones. So where does this be true? Well, rational homogeneous manifolds are classified. Those who are LQL are easily detectable from the classification. So practically, we would them know all of them. We would, the, we would know all of them. Okay? So, as a result, a complete classification of LQLs would follow. And um, there will be some very, very nice consequences. So, in particular, From the classification we already know, those which are homogeneous, now remember if you project isomorphically the defect does not change, right? 
when you cut with a hyperplane it decreases by one this is more or less trivial to see so in particular it would follow that delta of any LQL is at most 8 which if you remember would give a small hint about that extremely puzzling fact that no one knows examples of manifolds such that the second variety does not feel Pn and uh, so in all the examples we know delta is at most 8 and this is really something so this would explain somehow this mystery because for those who are the easiest to understand and by far the most natural among all that is to say LQL this would be a theorem and so far nobody imagined another strategy of proving this but this should be very difficult probably anyway I think it's uh, it's quite interesting at least for us good now I think that ah, it's uh, not so bad not so bad maybe maybe we can do the whole job are you do you feel well you know what uh, the rock stars uh, when there are hundred uh, thousand people yeah ask at a certain moment that before passing to the second part of the concert do you feel well <laughs> and the people are saying yeah but here everybody is uh, kind of uh, sleepy yeah. so I am not so sure <laughs> that about the, the reaction would be <laughs> the same anyway now I, I'm thinking because I have uh, two choices to make it short or to make it long so maybe I'll make it short okay now I'd like to say some two expectations and uh, some principles that uh, govern